Hang on, hang on. Yep. New video, new video. Well done. <laughs> so today I want to do two objects at the same time, or rather two double objects at the same time. Uh, in particular, double quasars. So I've got two images here. They look superficially very similar, two little blobs, but they're actually really, really different. But it takes some detective work to figure out how different they are. What you're seeing is double quasars. So a quasar is a quasi-stellar object. So it's something that on a photograph looks like a star, just a point source. But they are actually really luminous objects in the very distant universe. We think they are accreting supermassive black holes. So when you do a survey with an astronomical telescope and you take pictures of the sky and you see two little point sources next to each other, there are multiple explanations. First of all, they could just be stars, okay? Stars in our own galaxy, sort of very nearby. They could be a chance pairing of one star and one quasar, and that would be very different distances. They could be two physical quasars that are actually a binary pair close to each other, or they could be something else, which I'll talk about at the end. Let's look at the picture on the left here. This is an image of two quasars located together very close on the sky, they are only 0.46 arc seconds apart. It's difficult to put that into scale, so let's try. If you take your little finger and hold it at arm's length, that will just block out the size of the full moon. And that is half a degree by half a degree, okay? So to get down to arc seconds, you have to take your degree, chop it into 60 arc minutes, and chop each one of those into arc seconds. Then you take about a half of an arc second, and you get the separation between these two. It is very, very, very close together. We need the power of the Hubble Space Telescope to distinguish them. Now, the way that this was found was quite interesting. It wasn't found by looking for two things close together. It was actually using the Gaia satellite. Gaia is a satellite that has been scanning the whole sky for multiple years, mostly measuring the positions of stars within our own galaxy to an incredibly high precision. This is called astrometry. But it can also be used to find other interesting objects. The discoverers used Gaia to look for objects that weren't double, because Gaia couldn't resolve them, but had some sort of funny jiggle to their light. Um, and they, they liken this to um, signals at a railway crossing, where you have two lights that are jiggling on and off and on and off. And so Gaia wouldn't have been able to see that there were two objects there, but there would have been enough error, unexplained, unexplained error in the measurements to cause some sort of ast astrometric um, excess. And so in finding these candidate objects that look a bit funny in the Gaia observations, they could go with the Hubble Space Telescope and in this case find that there is actually two separate objects. So observations with many other telescopes show us that uh, they have different properties in x-rays, in radio, and if you take a spectra, you find that they're almost the same, but with a tiny, tiny little difference. So this is all sort of compatible with the idea that they are two physical objects that are actually very, very physically close together. And in fact, if you dig a little deeper in the Hubble Space Telescope images, you can actually see tidal tails evidence that they're sitting inside two massive disk galaxies that are colliding and their stars are being thrown about and stretched into these big elongated tails that tell us it's a merger. So pretty clear that this pair is a physical object and we're seeing two supermassive black holes in the distant universe at the epoch of high noon, cosmic high noon, where the, there was lots of activity in terms of supermassive black hole accretion, star formation. We're seeing two supermassive black holes in orbit around each other, only a few kiloparsecs apart. So that's smaller than the distance from our solar system to the center of our galaxy. This is probably a silly question, but they're also embedded within two galaxies. That's right, you've got two galaxies colliding at the center of them, you've got two supermassive black holes. Now all of this happened in the distant past. This is all over and done with by now. We're seeing this as it was 10 billion years ago. The likely outcome, if we were able to see them as they are now, 
is that they've merged into one massive black hole and those two disk galaxies have probably themselves formed a, a, a fairly round and boring stellar um, collection known as an elliptical galaxy. So now, the object on the right, it looks pretty similar, doesn't it? We've got two point sources, two quasars, but these were discovered in 1979. So here's an image from the original 1979 paper showing the pair. It's not very spectacular, but it makes you realize the sort of needle in the haystack search that was going on to identify that something a little unusual here was happening and then to go and follow it up. What the original authors found was that these are two objects that are close together on the sky, not as close as our previous pair. Uh, this is six arc seconds apart. But where our other pair had differences in their observed properties, these ones were identical twins. They were exactly the same redshift, and it looked like they had very, very similar properties. Our final hypothesis is that it's actually the same object, but we're seeing two separate images of them through a phenomenon known as gravitational lensing. Here's in the abstract. Difficulties arise in describing them as two distinct objects, and the possibility that there are two images of the same object formed by a gravitational lens is discussed. They cracked it. They knew it. So a follow-up paper by many of the same authors showed a more detailed spectrum. This is object A, object B. We're seeing the fingerprint of the elements in this object as a function of wavelength, and they are absolutely identical. And if we go back to our original image, you can actually see on the right-hand side here a little fuzzy red thing. And that's actually an intervening galaxy. And that's what's doing the lensing. This galaxy is part of a galaxy cluster. The light from one distant quasar has come through this galaxy cluster. Thanks to general relativity, it's been split along two separate paths. When we get it, when it gets to us, we see them as two distinct objects. It's just an optical illusion. And in fact, there's a time delay as well. Because the light is taking two different paths to get to us, it's actually passing through slightly different areas of space um, and it's taking different amounts of time. And so should uh, something like a flash go off in one, it'll take 14 months before we see it in the other. And one will have traveled 1.1 light years longer than the other one. That's cool. 